I just think as a creative person, it's easy to stop. Every day you wake up thinking, am I making an impact? Am I even doing this for the right reasons? Or what am I doing? Am I chasing, am I chasing money or am I yeah. chasing passion? And is passion enough to provide the bills or for the bills and right. provide for my family? Yes. You know, and uh I, I think especially nowadays it's it's a lot more difficult to be a creative and to take that leap of faith. Hey everyone, welcome back to What's Love Got to Do With It, the podcast. And as you know, I have been sharing that this is a laboratory for me, um, trying different things, different formulas per se, to see what really aligns with what I'm doing in this version of my life that I'm calling Joseph 6.0, since I just turned 60. And a part of that is speaking to um, folks that have impacted me in some shape or form and reaching out to them. Um, connecting with them, having conversations to see if we can come on and have it publicly so that um, you can learn and feel what I'm, you know, um, receiving from the people that I bring on. And so I'm really, uh, really, really happy to share that Russ Taka is here, um, who is the um, founder of Human Catalyst, um, a clothing brand that drew me in actually because of the name and so we've had a preliminary conversation and you know connected and you know just really had a beautiful conversation of exploration and what do things mean and what are we experiencing so I'm like you're perfect come on and let's let's have this conversation so Russ welcome oh uh, thanks for having me yeah thanks for being here man and so I'd love for you to share a little bit about yourself and, you know, where you are, what you do and all those things. And we'll just let the conversation uh, take course. Take course. Okay. Um, my name is Russ and uh, I'm a fourth generation Japanese American uh, from San Diego. And I run a clothing brand called Human Catalyst. Um, it's a little complex, but I started it. Um, let me see. So I was actually, I had a job and then I got laid off and, uh, I was doing graphic design. I was designing t-shirts for multiple people and, um, I got laid off and I was about to have a baby. And, um, I remember I got a phone call while I was in the ultrasound. I was looking at the screen of my daughter or soon to be daughter, I guess my daughter at that time still. But um, I was looking at the screen, looking at my wife and um, I got a phone call from my job and they were telling me that they had to lay me off. Oh. Um, and uh, at that point, I didn't know what to do. So, I mean, I always tell people I felt like the lowest of the low. Yeah. And I went to go look for jobs, you know, like anyone would. And it was when the economy was really bad and it was next to impossible to find a job as a graphic designer. Um, that was a time when homes were being lost and belts were being tightened and yeah. um, graphic design and art wasn't really on the radar for a necessity. Essentials, right? Yeah, like an essential job at the time. So I didn't know what to do, but I was making t-shirts for several brands and they were selling thousands of them. So. I thought to myself, maybe it's something I can do on my own. Mm. And quickly I came to realize it's a lot harder when you don't have money like that to create yeah. a brand. But um, I just kept on plugging away and just trying to do it and helping raise my family. I have a son who's disabled, um, well, my stepson. And he is nonverbal and he also can't walk. He basically needs full-time care. Mm -hmm. And um, I just kind of took that role and taking the role of taking care of my daughter when she was born. Um, and unfortunately, which is really, which is really um, 
hard, but my wife went to go work in the field and uh, not like the strawberry field or anything. She <laughs> does accounting and stuff, but you know, she had to take some time away from my daughter, which I think is really hard in the long run. Sure. Um, and I kind of did that role and I, I wasn't necessarily good at it, but I just couldn't find anything. And Human Catalyst started as like a necessity to kind of make ends meet. And it's taken me a while to figure out what Human Catalyst is, but basically it's about human change. So this has been the evolution of, of my change going from the lowest of the low and trying to find my place on this earth and figure out how I can impact others through what I do, strangely through graphic design and t-shirts and just anything creative along the way. Yeah, yeah. But, wow, uh, thank you. What a beautiful um, introduction to <clears throat> who you are and what has evolved as an ex as your human experience has shaped what you're doing. Yeah. You know, I think it's pretty fascinating. And as you open up and share a little bit more of the family, you know, just, I, I just applaud you for taking on the mantle of, you know, leader, provider, you know, caretaker. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't say, like I said, I think, my wife has had to do a lot of the leading and I kind of took a non-normal role, you know, in order for our family to function. And yeah. uh, I don't know, it, it's definitely like a modern twist, I guess, on uh, the way things work. But nowadays everything is just so weird and it's just so yeah. different. <clears throat> you know, um... I just like to share that in my own discovery, right? Through, you know, as you know, I talk about my hero's journey, you know, is when I think about my belief about what you just shared, mm -hmm. like it's, there's a twist to it, you know, or maybe that it's not normal. Yeah. Right? So what that is, that comes from what we believe to be right. Right. So I, that's why I'm say, saying leader, because leader isn't necessarily a position as it is a mindset that I, I'm going to do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And so in the judgment of your life, you know, it doesn't necessarily fit in with societal expectations of the perfect. This is what the family unit is supposed to be. This is how everything's supposed to be. Who said that? Yeah. <laughs> That we've adopted that, adapted it, and that's our measuring stick of our value and our worth. So I just, in my own discovery of it, it's like, oh my goodness, this is why I'm suffering. <laughs> it's because I'm trying to live up to an expectation that I didn't set for myself. Yeah. Right? You know? Yeah. So that's why I love your brand. I mean, just the name alone, mm -hmm. you know, Human Catalyst. Oof right? A catalyst for humans, a catalyst to be human, a catalyst to understand humans. I mean, just so many arms and legs to it. Yeah. You know, and then twisting it around to like, you know, human, <laughs> you know, it's, that's why I was drawn. And then, and at that time I was uh, doing my own little, you know, apparel gig and we had a t-shirt that said human, um, no other label required. And it was our top seller. Uh -huh. And so it was that idea. Uh, and this is where humanity started to be more of a topic mm -hmm. because of all the wars that we're hearing about, you know, physical wars, race wars, et cetera. You yeah. Know? So your brand um, is really solid in that sense. And then I saw your designs. I'm like, oh, he's good. <laughs> it's like oh, no thank you he's really really talented you know and i just that's what i want to do man is encourage you to like like follow this because it's it's not wrong yeah it's it's hard to do um 
I was actually talking to my friend uh, the other day. Well, first of all, sorry, my son is here, and I don't know if you can hear him in the oh. background. And apology not necessary, but thank you for. But, uh, uh, um, so I was talking to my friend the other day about this thought of like creative fuel, and there's this like musician that I've been a fan of for a while, a while now, and and he's been creating music for about 15 years, and then all of a sudden, eight years ago, he just stopped. He's got a fan base, has several thousand YouTube followers, and um, there's you go on his YouTube today, and there's still people asking like, "Hey, are you gonna make new music? Or where did you go?" You know, you can find comments from like weeks ago to months ago, and uh, I was telling my friend just that I understand why you would leave because I feel like as a creative, you only have so much fuel to to move and you know you you think that you're going to go so far on this tank of gas and you think along the way there's going to be other gas stations to fill you up and sometimes like they don't exist the you know a lot of times you're running on fumes as a creative because people don't understand and also people people aren't willing to support it without really understanding it so it's easy to just like, you know, you, you're hopeful at the beginning and just you start to realize this is going to be a lot harder to travel cross country or whatever yeah. you're doing yeah. um, with limited resources. And, you know, I was, I was telling her that I feel like I'm at a rest stop on the side of the road mm. and I'm watching like other people on their path traveling and they're on the freeway and I'm, I'm seeing them go. Yeah. And um, I guess I start to question like, why am I not a lot farther along? Yeah. And maybe like, as I'm resting, thinking to myself, should I stop? Should I turn back around? Where's my map? What am I doing? You know? And yeah. I kind of think that's the state of where my head is at right now and mm. i mean that's kind of a complex analogy but uh i just think as a creative person it's easy to stop every day you wake up thinking am i making an impact am i even doing this for the right reasons or what am i doing am i chasing am i chasing money or am i yeah. chasing passion and is passion enough to provide the bills or for the bills and right provide for my family yes you know and uh i i think especially nowadays it's it's a lot more difficult to be a creative and to take that leap of faith mm. you know i think as soon as you go on the internet you're competing against the world oh yeah and it's no longer about being the best on your block or in your neighborhood or anything it's it's really international you know and yeah. it's a lot tougher stage yeah. you know yeah yeah now, um just thank you for that just gorgeous um analogy very vivid um i too you know i remember res it resonated it was like beautifully like spoken for me yeah. And that's not about me, but in that relate um, relatability, it's like I totally caught that. It's like there they go at high speed, you know. Yeah, and sometimes it's it's hard because like as I'm sitting there on the side, I'll see some of my friends. Yes. In the fast lane or the oh HOV lane, yeah. and they're not going through traffic. They're they're getting through it, and and dude, I'm a coach. I'm you know, well, I mean, I'm a a, a coach, and yeah. I see. People I've coached, you know, and I'm like, like in, in the fast lane. Yeah. And so of course there's like, I'm happy for them and I'm, I'm envious. Yeah. That, yeah. And so I'm learning that when I start to go to self-judgment, that's a door I had, I have to close. So I've had to teach myself and it's taken a while, 
that you, you know as soon as i know it's going there it's like mm, no what's the curiosity in it right what am i making this to mean right what is this saying you know so started asking different types of questions versus why can't i get on the freeway yeah you know do i need a long on ramp i mean you know start like and then then i start all the reasons why i'm not on it right so now i'm living a reasonable life yeah right so these people going by are living unreasonable lives right and you, so like and it's not about the grind per se as it is they've made you know those decisions but it's the action part of it i think it's the you know the embodiment piece so yeah. i get you man shoot but man, that, i think the hard part for me is that when i started human catalyst and i just initiated the launch i just knew i was moving forward and yes. you know although there's a lot of times i feel like i'm moving forward i've zigzagged a lot and circled oh, yeah. back around and I haven't gotten as far as I thought. I mean, if we're talking about rest stops, I thought I would be like interstate, you know, on the other side of the country. And I realized like, I'm still at the local rest stop. And although I feel like I've been busy, I've just been driving around the neighborhood. And mm -hmm. uh, it's it gets a little frustrating and a little sad and you have to reflect on yourself that like, obviously I'm not a good planner. I'm not a good, um, like, although I want to go forward, I need to really plan and have a destination of where I'm going. Right. And I think I've spent a lot of years pretending I was busy. Yeah. But just doing the same thing, expecting different results and, Oh, um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's been very difficult to like uh accept. I'm just getting yeah, man. I mean we're we're exposing what many experience. So we're not alone. You're not alone. Yeah. You know, and <clears throat> I think the distinction, at least for me, in this conversation is creatives. You know, the creatives, because of their open heart, I mean, you know, um, feel more than others, mm -hmm. you know, so our response, our reaction to to our surroundings and things that are happening, things that are said, how we process it, what we make it to mean, you know, keep us many times in this loop, right? It's not yeah. a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just who we are. <clears throat> and then when we can got to get super curious like you know like I like I mentioned and some of it call it the inner work or you know self-development personal growth spirituality you know um the hero's journey whatever it may be it's it's the it is the road less traveled yeah you know and with creatives you know for me it's <laughs> It's really all the stops that are going on in here, you know, in my mind, you know, so it's uh, how do I tame that? So, you know, for myself, meditation has really helped. I can see how busy my mind was because of it. And um, it's like when I first started to just learn the basics of like paying attention to your breath, right? And how I was taught was, you know, allow to you know really feel like the, the air coming out of your nose like focus in on feeling the breath and before you know it my mind is <laughs> thinking about like where did that come from yeah that's what helped me to say I didn't produce this thought I didn't say come think about this I'm like oh you know so that's where the whole idea of consciousness started to make sense for me so and 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 how I beat myself up about it. Oh, you're not doing it right. What they say is no. You're now aware that your mind is wandering, right? Pull it back, back to breath, right? Center. So yeah. in that, those types of things that I don't, I never learned before, I never knew about. And if I open my mind to it, because 
in the past that was too woo-woo for me that was too new agey and you know yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. right it's like and as soon as I put all those expectations down of what I'm supposed to believe I started to experience life greater God greater love greater you know so I love the journey you're on I think yeah you see I, I haven't gotten to that point yet I mean I got a free meditation app from Kaiser yeah. And then I opened it up once and then it said, come back tomorrow. I <laughs> fell asleep the next day and I've never <laughs> opened it again. And that was months ago. And I know that there's things that I can do to better myself, but I still um, struggle with, I guess, um, being too hard on myself. Yeah. I think it's a creative thing where like, um, you know, it's not supposed to matter the likes and the views and whatnot, but when people don't acknowledge my work and I put my heart into my work, yeah, it just makes me feel like that was a result on me or my skills. And um, I just end up getting into this sunken place. And yeah. um, I, I think it's a common thing with creatives. I, I don't think and I think just in general, but I mean, I think nowadays, you know, anyone with an Instagram or a Facebook, they're, they're considered a creative. If, if you spend any time trying to figure out what picture to put up or, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of background for this, or right. that, you're obviously some type of creative trying to get some kind of acknowledgement from strangers and you know, you you ultimately know when you post something that means a lot to you and it ends up getting three likes. Right. And one of them is your mom. One of them is a, <laughs> you know, your other account kind of spam bot from <laughs> Russia or something. And the other one was an accident. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can't help but feel a little pain, you know, and, and you start to question yourself like, man, am I even making an impact or should I even continue? And mm -hmm. I think I think that's one of the hardest things just yeah. for anyone nowadays. I, I think even for kids and just anyone, like, you know, even a kid taking a picture of their bike or something and right. you get negative comments or no comments. And it's like, man, the world is full of haters and yeah. It really takes a toll on your mental state. For sure, man. Well, yeah. I, you know, you know, I, I, I'll share that what really helped me is when I began to invest in, you know, these assessments that, you know, it kind of reflect back who you are as it relates to maybe your strengths, your, you know, things to this nature. And I've done many of them when I was in my corporate life and then even, you know, past that in terms of personal growth or development. And the idea of knowing thyself, right? I mean, there's so many aspects of it, but that's an important part of us accepting who we are. And so the the most recent, and I should say probably the most powerful has been human design. And I don't know if we talked about that the last time we spoke, but, you know, when, and I, I appreciate astrology, you know, and I've been open to all the things, you know, in the cosmos, et cetera, and there are so many factors to how this was created. When I got my results and it was explained to me, you know, this is my energetic DNA. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hmm. It was like, you know, it, it was, it was crazy how precise it was. And then I started to understand that my design, a part of it is to guide, you know, and to lead and to help um, to teach others how to see things a different way. Mm -hmm. And then when I got that, I'm like, okay, that feels good. And a part of that design is that we need recognition. We want to be sure that, you know, are you getting what I'm saying? Are, are you picking up what I'm putting down? Because yeah. my heart is in it. And so... I used to judge it because I was told it's not about the likes, it's not about the followers, et cetera. No, it's not about that, but that helps us to say, 
are people getting this? Yeah, and I think that's that creative fuel that you need. It, do, it doesn't have to be monetary, but you just need to know and have some assurance that like you're not a complete moron. You know, like you're just living in this, like, right. like you're just naive in this imaginary world where you're actually doing more good than you are. Yeah. And, and right. sometimes you, you feel like that when the response is crickets. Yeah. You know, and I think yeah. that's a hard, I think that's the hard part. You know, I was telling my friend too, that a lot of times that happens with restaurants where there's like a popular restaurant. And then you hear about they're going to close down and it's like, well, why are they closing down? Well, because no one showed up like nobody, they took it for granted and nobody showed up. So eventually they couldn't, they couldn't keep it open. But then as soon as they say they're closing, all of a sudden now there's like millions of reviews about how, oh, we used to love that place and spend our birthdays there. You know, that was my dad's favorite hamburger spot, whatever. And, you know, but if that was the case, they wouldn't have closed down. Right. And I think they just didn't have the, the fuel, whether it be monetary or reviews when it mattered. You know, so yeah. they had no choice but to close. And I think sometimes as a creative, unfortunately, you run out of, you run out of energy and resources before the world found out about how great you were. And mm -hmm. that's that's really unfortunate. You it know, and it's kind yeah. of like a restaurant that's really good and just not making it because it was just missing that social ingredient or something to just create a buzz. And, yeah. you know, it's unfortunate that that's the way the world works now. Yeah. But, it truly is about like getting attention and and somehow figuring out how to get that attention, retain that attention, and keep on Span impressing that. people <laughs> along the way. And, right. and it's hard, it's draining, and it's a different kind of ball game than it used to be. I mean, even for me with my brand, it's been uh, close to twelve years and it's been different the entire time yeah. you know there's been different eras and stages of how you do this thing and social media just you know exponentially changes it and yeah. it's not necessarily good right you know it's it's yeah. very tough on anyone and yeah. i think businesses businesses are in bad shape because you know there's always someone younger that, you know, like one of the most interesting things is that um, I've had to show my face more and let people know who I am as part of my business. And I've never done that. I've never talked to a camera. I don't, I don't sit there and have selfies on my phone all day. And you go to any kid, their entire camera roll is them with yeah. selfies and taking pictures and videos of themselves and Right. you know they've been doing this since they were born and yeah, yeah. it's wow. a different ball game for anyone that's getting older in the years so in order to play the game you just have to get over it and yeah. i think that's that's the hard part because you know from anyone in a generation before cell phones or even the invention of a cell phone with a camera yeah. I mean, let alone a camera. I, I can't imagine being in middle school or high school. My friend went to develop film and every single picture was them. I would be mm -hmm. like, what is wrong with you? I, I've never seen anyone do that. And you're talking about people now with several rolls of film, yeah. all with their face and outfits. And it's just crazy. It's, it's a completely different mindset than I've ever grown up with. And it's yeah, it's it's a conversation I want to I want to continue to have. I'm respectful of our time, and what I want to do, Russ, is uh -huh. um, if you I'm putting you on the spot here. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. Uh, I'd love to have um, a continuation and be part two of our conversation. Okay. 
because um, I, I really appreciate what we've, been, what we've been able to discuss and really, you know, bring forth and just be really real and honest about it. You know, um, I would be remiss, however, and dishonoring, you know, this lab that I started without asking you the question with everything that we've shared today, what you've shared with us and what you're doing, what's love got to do with it? Um, I think I didn't know that love had anything to do with it, to be quite honest. And as I've, as I traveled more, met more people, um, spoke with more people and without knowing, been moved by more people, mm. I realized that love has everything to do with it. And um, it's that great, it's that great debate in my head. You know, um, you gotta be a little bit crazy to go on this journey yeah. of trying to do a clothing brand in modern day because um, you want to do things for love but it does require money along the way and a lot of times the actions that I do are based on love and make no sense to anyone in the business world yeah. you know um, I'm open one day a week because you know i got to take care of my son and also the fact that everyone's at work from nine to five like so when people come to my store they're like why are you only open one day a week and because i chose love and family i mean i can be open late at night but i would miss my family and that's more important you know and wow. you know to have a store nowadays I think it's really unnecessary. You can do everything online. We're even doing this podcast online. You know, right. there is no need for it for there there is still a human connection in real life, but you can do a lot of things online, especially running a business. Um a physical store I think is becoming a a very uh novelty type business. Yeah. And um I think my love for people and brotherhood, or I guess if you have a sister, what is that? Sisterhood? <laughs> Siblinghood? You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, to, to be a part of the community and have real conversations, shaking hands, an ear for them, a shoulder to cry on, that's become more important and that's the only reason why I've kept the store open. And um, I would say that that's entirely built on my love for people, my love for people's feelings, and just empathy for like people's struggles. And, um, wow. yeah. you know, that's so I guess to answer your question, <laughs> the entire focus has. 75% is about love and um, unfortunately the way the world works you still need 25% to be about business and that's to just doggy paddle and stay afloat it really should be the other way if you really want to <laughs> make moves and and yeah. push forward but you know there you end up not loving yourself doing that right so, that's key it's, that, it's the great balance yeah thank you I really really appreciate your response to that question you know and what struck me is like when you started with i i didn't even know love had anything to do with it yeah and it's through your human connections yeah right it's like it wasn't necessarily anything esoteric or anything you know even religious or it was in the human like you know exchange yeah you even said you know in my love for people it's obvious man so you know thank you for sharing so oh, no, thank you. i'm excited to get another one um definitely going to do that soon and for those who are watching us on youtube or listening on um, all the podcast platforms 
Um, check out Russ. I'll put all of the contact information in the show notes. And just know that um, he and I will be collaborating in this sense to really bring these conversations forth because many things that you shared, I just, it's like we're living almost the same life in terms yeah. of what you're experiencing. So thank you. Because you're speaking no, thank to a, you. lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of dads, a lot of men who are, you want, you know, moving from surviving to thriving. Right? Yeah. Do that. So we'll continue the conversation. No, right. sounds good. Thank you, Russ, for coming it. on. Thank you. Thank you all for listening in. We'll see you next time. I must love got to do with it. Bye, y'all. Mm -hmm.